Hello, welcome to St George's Everton Online. It's great to have you with us again today. Um, we're going to, as we always do, worship God with songs. Uh, we're going to hear from the Bible. We're going to read the Bible and we're going to explore how the Bible passage today might uh, inform our lives and transform our lives uh, if we allow God to uh, open our hearts and our minds through it. So let's uh, welcome God to be with us wherever we are right now. So let's open our hearts, open our minds and pray for God's spirit to come upon us wherever we are right now. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends but as for prophecies they will come to an end and as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will come to an end for we know only in part and we prophesy only in part for when the complete comes the partial will come to an end when I was a child I spoke like a child I thought like a child I reasoned like a child when I became an adult I put an end to childish ways for now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Well, let's sing our praises to the source of all love. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your help and salvation.
We come now to our Bible reading and once again our Bible reading is from John's Gospel and it's John's Gospel chapter 2 starting at verse 13. So let's look at this passage together. It says it was almost time for the Jewish Passover feast so Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courtyard he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves. Others were sitting at tables exchanging money. So Jesus made a whip out of ropes. He chased all the sheep and cattle from the temple courtyard. He scattered the coins of the people exchanging money. And he turned over their tables. He told those who were selling doves, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered what had been written. It says, my great love for your house will destroy me. Then the Jewish leaders asked him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do this? Jesus answered them, When you destroy this temple, I will raise it up again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But the temple Jesus had spoken about was his body. His disciples later remembered what he had said. That was after he had been raised from the dead. Then they believed the scripture. They also believed the words that Jesus had spoken. Meanwhile, he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast. Many people saw the signs he was doing and they believed in his name. But Jesus did not fully trust them. He knew what people are like. He didn't need anyone to tell him what people are like. He already knew why people do what they do. So there we have it. Jesus clearing the temple in Jerusalem. This is a, a really key moment in the life of Jesus. And it's one of the events and probably the main event that brings him into conflict with the religious authorities of the day. You see, in Jesus' time, the people, the Jewish people, the people of Israel, the temple was their most important sign of God being with them. They believed that God's presence lived, dwelt in the middle of the temple, the, the, the place they called the Holy of Holies, the most sacred part of the temple. And they believed that by coming to the temple, they were able to bring their prayers. They were able to bring their praises. They were able to bring their worship. They were able to be close to God when they were at the temple. But the temple had become in some ways corrupted. There had been there was uh, trading going on. In the market, it wasn't so much that there was trading going on, but the fact that it was uh, something that um, uh, the, the way they were doing the trading was detrimental. It sometimes excluded the poorest people. 
so only those who could afford to could really participate in the life and worship of God in the city and in the land. And Jesus came and he turned this over. He, 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 he rips it apart. He, he stands against it in the most visible, active way possible. He, he drives out the money changes. He turns over the tables. Uh, he drives the animals out of the temple. And for Jesus, this is all about the question of signs. We talked uh, last time about how Jesus turning water into wine was a sign something that points to something else. And Jesus here um, talks about the fact that the temple as a sign, a sign of God's presence, which is what it was for the people at the time, had come to say something else about God, something that wasn't true, that you had to uh, be wealthy enough to come to, uh, to, to God and into God's presence. You had to do all the right things. You had to get it all right. And some people were excluded from this. And what Jesus says here is he says, rebuild this temple, uh, destroy this temple, and I will rebuild it, rebuild it in three days. And here he's obviously not talking about the physical temple. That is impossible, as the authorities say, it took 46 years to build this temple. You're not going to build it in three days, they say. But as John points out, what Jesus was talking about was his own body when he would die and then be resurrected, raised to new life again in three days. And what Jesus is saying here and what John understands Jesus to be saying here is that he, now Jesus, is the sign of God's presence with us. That God's presence lives in him. And to come to Jesus, you don't have to have the right sacrificial animal you don't have to have the right money you don't have to have all those things that you would need in order to visit the temple you could come to Jesus as you were and that meant those who were considered unclean those who were considered um, outcast those who were exceptionally poor all those people could come to Jesus as they were and Jesus went out to them as well as he walked through the land, bringing God's presence with him, working the signs, healing, delivering, transforming, accepting, changing. And so this passage is all about telling us the same thing that John has already been telling us throughout his gospel and continues to say over and over again through the rest of the gospel. That God, God's presence, was in Jesus. That Jesus was God himself come to live among us. And so in order for us to know God, for order for us to know what God is like, we should look at Jesus. Look at his life. Look at his teachings. Look at the way he was when he was in the world to know what God is like. But more than that, and this is something that we'll come to in weeks ahead, John tells us not only that we can know about Jesus and therefore know about God, but that we can know Jesus. We can know him personally. We can know him as we know someone intimately. As Paul said in the uh, passage we had earlier on as we were preparing to worship, to know fully as I am already fully known. The spirit of Jesus is available to us so that we can know him in a mysterious way, certainly, but we can know him intimately. He is close to us. So what can we take from this? What can we take from this? Well, first of all, Jesus can be known. And we should seek Jesus in the world. We should seek him in our prayers. We should seek him in our worship. Seek him wherever we are. Be attentive. Ask him to open our eyes and our minds to see him. But also, we can know about him 
And so that's why reading the Bible is a really, really good thing to do. Because when we read about Jesus, we come to know about God. We come to know who God is truly. And all of us will have this different ideas around in the world about who God is. But we can know what he is like through reading the Bible, particularly reading the Gospels, but also the rest of the Bible, which all in different ways points to Jesus's coming and what Jesus will do in the world. So if you've got a Bible, dust it off the bookshelf, you know, blow the dust off it. Start having a read of it, little bits at a time. Read John's Gospel. Read one of the other Gospels to start with. It's a great place to start. Or if you haven't got a Bible at home, you can get um, Bibles online. Go to any of the Bible websites and you can just read the Bible for free online. Or there's apps for your phone. There's all kinds of different ways to read the Bible. But have a go. Make it a habit. Um, Because by doing that, you will begin to understand. You will begin to see God more for who he truly is. So let's take a moment now. Let's ask God once again to meet with us. Let's pray to him right now. Jesus, we thank you that you came to earth to show us who God truly is and what God is truly like to be the sign of his presence among us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are not distant from us, but that you come to live amongst us, to be close to us. And I pray, Lord, that we would feel that, that we would know that wherever we are right now. We would know that you are closer to us than we are to ourselves. Help us to comprehend and to see you and the way that you hold us in our lives. And Lord, as you invite us to trust you more, to reach out and take steps of faith, I pray, Lord, that you would guide us along that journey gently, taking us one step at a time, to where you're leading us. Pray, Lord, for those who we are concerned about today. And in our hearts and our minds, we lift them up to you whether it's people we know who are sick or grieving or struggling with their mental health or whatever it is, we lift those people to you now. O good Jesus, word of the Father and brightness of his glory, whom angels desire to behold, teach me to do your will, that guided by your Spirit I may come to that blessed city of everlasting day, where all are one in heart and mind, where there is safety and eternal peace, happiness and delight, where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'll leave you today with this final song. Thank you.
pretends each generation is here. The God who left his throne so glorious, the God who walked the road before us, the God who rose from death victorious is here. Yeah.